the last thing that we'll look at here, and this will actually be part of the homework. So we have to have some homework in class, and this will be the homework. You'll have the weekend to work on it. It'll be due on Monday, or Tuesday. I'll give you the full details in a moment, but here's how we start off. I would like to add some unique fonts to this project. And we saw that if we use the Google fonts, we can do it pretty easily. But that assumes you have an internet connection. Another way to do uh, fonts is to have the font files as part of your project. We can actually have font files in our project and then link to them via CSS and then they work. So that means a person doesn't need those fonts on their computer. You can use any crazy font you want, it'll be part of the project and then it'll work. It needs a little bit of setup. So go to your web browser and let's go to the website fontsquirrel.com. <coughs> fontsquirrel.com. The thing with fonts always is, how do I use them in my project, number one, and number two, are they legal for me to use in my font? Because hard to believe, but fonts themselves also have an ownership, have copyrights, and if you don't have the copyright, the, uh, the ability, the right to copy <coughs> something, you're breaking the law. So it's very obvious that if I take your cell phone, I broke the law, I stole your property. But it's not obvious that if I take your picture off of your website, I stole something from you and I broke the law. I stole your font off your website, I broke the law. Digital theft is very common, and we brush it aside so easily because it's not real. But it is real, it's intellectual property. Someone invented it, even a font. This S right here, with a little E like that, someone invented that and someone copyrighted it, we all get our copyright automatically, actually, in the US. You, whatever you create, you automatically have your copyright to it. So when we get to fonts, you may go to plenty of websites out there that are like 1,000 free fonts. Free fonts, just because someone put them on a website. So let's say you go to a website that says, yes, totally free fonts. Are they really free for commercial purposes too? Because a lot of times you'll get free fonts for non-commercial purposes. Someone's going to give away their font, but somewhere in the fine print it says you cannot use this font for a commercial purpose. We're going to be safe in this class because it's educational purposes. But if you are going outside of this class to make your own real app, you want to sell it and all of that, 99 cents at a time, it's a commercial purpose. Guess what? 100% free for commercial use fonts. So I'm driving you toward a website. It doesn't have a thousand fonts like Google has. It doesn't have 10,000 fonts like other websites. But these fonts are nice looking, high quality fonts that are safe for you to use in your projects. When you visit this site here, well, how do they make their money if they're giving their fonts away? Cool t-shirts, of course, like any modern enterprise. So you browse around here, you see all these fonts, Intro, Rust, and Milkshake, and all of them, and they're all basically free for you to use. There's different ways of how they're optimized to use on a computer, on an app. This one doesn't seem to be the best for an app. This is for the computer. So there are some differences here and there. Let's say I'm interested in um, finding a cool font, Mechanica, brand new the way this works. Well, some of them go off-site. Try to avoid those two. The easiest are going to be those that you can download directly off of this site. Going off-site to someone else's site probably has a couple more hoops to jump through. But what I would recommend is you browse the site and then on the right side also look under the classifications. I want to go look at retro fonts. Again, I can go find 3,000 retro fonts with a Google search, and here's only 36, but these 36 are safe for you to use, are good for you to use. So if I go look at retro, so I see all of these retro styles. I can test drive them a bit more. Diner regular, if you click on the name of a font, it'll show you the font in a variety of sizes and with a variety of text. And the reason I want you to fully look at the font is some of these fonts are hard to view, especially for some purposes. 
this font looks pretty good when it's nice and big, like an H1, but it looks pretty bad for a P. So the thing with graphic design and web design is cool fonts, but do they look good based on your purpose? You can really test this out by going to the test drive and typing in some text. My idea is that my app is called MySDCE with a lowercase my. That's going to make it all uppercase. You may or may not care. How the font looks in other ways, there's, a, there's an obese version, there's a regular version, a skinny version, etc. I can go to display fonts. I can go over to grunge fonts, dingbats, calligraphic. I would further recommend when you filter over here, choose the web font filter. The desktop filter is also going to show you fonts that might not be the best for mobile devices. So the web font, it doesn't explicitly call it mobile device, but if you look under web font and then the variety of other screens. So the font itself is going to give you this style, this um, effect. How you actually use them in, in our app. Uh, depending on the depending on on the uh, on the font, some of them are very straightforward. Some of them you have to do a little reading. And I'm browsing around, and I see Airstream. I click on that. And if I've got a tab that says Web Font Kit, this will be one of the easiest ways for you to use it in your project. Now because I have the web font turned on, it's helping me to get focused on the fonts that are easiest for me to use in my app. If I don't have web font, I have to follow some steps in the generator. But if you have that web font active, you can go to web font kit. The way this works is, the way this all of this works is through a CSS declaration at font face. There is a CSS, a special CSS rule, at dash face, ash, at font dash face. The CSS declaration basically activates a font for you to use in your project. And this helps solve the issue about the font is not installed on the person's computer with this web font kit. Because what can happen here is I can download the WAF version, which is the recommended version that works on all modern browsers. I can activate these other ones. Uh, like if I need to target Internet Explorer 9, no longer required. So they're making it even easier. A few recent semesters when I taught this, we, we did it slightly different. It seems it's even easier now. So the point is you go to the web font kit, is the WAF version, the most modern way to display a font. If you notice on other parts it says download the TTF. Some of them say download the OTF. Well, notice inside of a font web kit, it's giving us the most compatible version. The other versions assume you're on a Windows computer. TTF is a, is a Windows format. WAF is a more universal one. So let's say you find a cool font, you're in the web font kit, I want to download the whole font face kit. Not simply download TTF, you want the whole kit. If you don't see kit, you need to turn on web font filter. Download a kit, 
It's going to give you a zip file. Inside the zip file, you've got how to use it and the actual files. I'm going to extract the whole thing. Eventually, we need to put the right files in our project. But I downloaded it. I'm looking at the zip file. I'm going to click Extract to the desktop for the moment. Depending on your font kit, it may have a lot of separate ones because there's often the regular version of a font, there's the thick version of the font, there's the thin version. I downloaded Airstream, I unzipped it, how to use it, and the actual files are in web font in a folder called Airstream Regular Macro Man, in my case. And inside, that's got the actual WAF file and a CSS file I can borrow, plus a demo. So I need to copy the folder that has the, the font file. So be careful here on the root level of the zip file. It says web font. Inside of web font should be the, the folder that you really need because that folder has the WAF file and the CSS file. I need to copy that font into my project project folder. In any folder structure you want, I'm just simply copying it to the root level. So in my project folder, I've got the font kit that I've downloaded. In the font kit folder, it's got specimen and demo. These you don't really need, actually. You only need the WAF file and the CSS file. The CSS file, you need to link to that from your index file. It's called style sheet. You can leave it as is. I'm going to call it font CSS. You don't have to, but I did. So that, that thing that says demo and specimen, I did delete them. They're just taking up space that is not necessary. What's necessary is the font file and the CSS file. So from the index file, I need to connect to that font file. I'm in my index file. At the very top, I have the jQuery, I have the my fonts here. Uh, we should add this before my styles. Link rel style sheet, href. This one's going to be annoying to type because inside of my project I've got a folder called Airstream Regular Macro Man, which I can rename. You can rename. I'll we'll call that that. And inside of that, it's font.css. So I downloaded the Airstream font. Obviously, if you type exactly what I typed, that assumes you downloaded the Airstream font. If you downloaded something else, you need to type the name of your folder. And so, uh, there's, uh, there's the name of the folder, there's the name of the CSS file. Inside the CSS file, if you're curious, it's not that much, but what's inside of this is 
at font face. The whole purpose of this is to activate a font. We're, gonna, we're now going to be able to use the font family, in my case, Airstream Regular. If I want to reference that font, I have to do it with Airstream Regular. And there's a bunch of stuff that happens behind the scenes. Well, Airstream Regular is made up of the is made out of the EOT font or the this version of the WAF, etc. So it's got these different versions of the font. So we don't really need to do anything inside of that CSS file that was just to show you. The way we actually use it, well, it is useful actually to see that because it tells you how you, you how your font is named. In my case, it's this. So, for example, in my aside h1, if I paste that in. The font family that I'm going to use is Airstream Regular. That's what's in my font file, and this is going to apply to my h1 in the aside. There's my font. So it is a few steps. I need to go to the font squirrel, I need to find the right WebKit font, download it, unzip it, put it in my project, and then the index file points to the CSS file. All of this that I just did is inside of your zip file, your font face kit. Did you notice how to use it? So what I've just shown you is inside of that. So the CSS code in that file, you need to link to that CSS <laughs> file you got from Font Squirrel, and then you basically use the name of the font defined in the CSS file from Font Squirrel. Once we have a connection to that font file, we can then use it anywhere. So that font family added that font on top. That's an H1. It's too small. I need to change it. That might not be an H1. But where I added that H1 at the top, it's that font. Nope, because in our code, it's not an ID. I'm targeting H1, my SDCE. It's H1. It's just a tag. So no pound, no dot. It's just a tag, H1. I, I, think, 
Yeah. 